I'm not in my right mind right now. I am super jet lagged. I've probably had two hours of sleep every night. I'm still not sure what day it is. Is it night? Is it morning? I don't know. I'm in my pajamas right now. So if I start slurring my words like a drunk or something shocking comes out of my mouth, just know that that is exactly the kind of thing that you have come to expect from me. The title of this video is very literal. My name is Teresa. My husband and I went to Japan for two weeks and we shot till we dropped. And the funny thing is, every time we go on vacation anywhere else, we never buy anything. You know, we just spend our money on food and experiences, but we don't buy things. But in Japan, Japan is different, guys. Japan is an exception. Our dream destination has always been Japan. We have both separately dreamed about going to Japan ever since we were in elementary school. So without further ado, this is my Japan haul. Japan felt to me it was just a few days ago, but it felt to me like a fever dream. As much as I would like to recount my adventures in Japan, I'm still trying to process it because given the amount of things that we did, given the intense way that we travel, like we travel like it's the amazing race. What one person can do in one week, we do in one day. And in one day, according to my Apple Health, I averaged 20,000 steps. So I have bruises and cuts on my feet. I unfortunately did not vlog a single thing because truth be told, despite having a YouTube channel, I'm a very crappy videographer. I mean, the camera is there, I just plop it up and there you go. And for this vacation, I'm kind of going through, um, well, my quarter life crisis is not yet over, but it's been compounded with like, what, a midlife crisis. So I'm like crises on top of crises. I'm going through an existential funk right now. So for this vacation, I really wanted to just get away from screens, get away from my computer and just touch grass and become a better Buddhist. So unfortunately, you don't get any Tokyo vlogs or Kyoto vlogs. And I did take photos, but they're mostly for me, for my own memories. They're like the type of photo that your mom would take in the 90s with a disposable camera. There was a moment in 2014 where I took great photos. Somehow everything clicked and I knew how to pose and everything. But recently I've just been feeling really awkward in front of the camera and I would just pose like this. My husband specifically was on the lookout for Anasika Tigers. He has a collection of Anasika Tigers. He's a big brand stan for that brand. Unfortunately, in 2023, they stopped selling their shoes in the United States. So that was specifically what he wanted to buy. He wanted to buy Mexico 66s or Tokyutens in Japan. But unfortunately, he has big feet. His shoe size is not made or sold in Japan. So unfortunately, he didn't get any shoes, but I did. I got Anasika Tigers, California 78s. They are still in the box. I put them in the box specifically for this video, but on the trip, I wore them the day after I bought them. So they're no longer new. And I walked all over the place in Japan in them. And the reason being is because, give me a moment. I'm gonna start showing you the shoes I packed for Japan to wear, and then the shoes that I bought, and they've all been worn, so that's why I'm wearing these gloves. When other YouTubers show you their shoes, you know, shoes that they've worn, they would grasp the shoe and touch the sole. Your, your shoes have been worn out outside in the city, on the ground, and you're touching the sole, and then you're touching other things. It, 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 it's unsanitary, so that's why I have these medical examination gloves. So these are my Mexico 66s and I wore these to Japan because they match the outfits I planned. These are very popular right now. They've grown in popularity, but I got these in 2017. I wear them on and off and these are great shoes to wear when you're just going out and about. But when you average about 20,000 steps, there's very little in the way of padding for my liking. If you're just going to one museum, they're fine. But if you went to three museums in one day, all that stands it's not very comfortable. And then I also packed, this is the shoe I wore most often is the Anasika Tigers Colorado 85s. Got these about in 2016 or so. And these are very comfortable, but they don't coordinate with all my outfits. So the shoes I bought in Japan, I wore them out like the next day and I trampled all over Japan in them. So that's why I have to wear the gloves. So aren't they cute? They remind me of the Nike Cortezes. So that 70s retro sneaker vibe. And these have 
a thicker sole. So there's more cushion and padding when you're just kind of standing around at museums. I find that standing is actually more tiring than walking. Like if you get me going, I'm okay. It's the standing guys. It's a standing. So these are the only shoes that I bought. So now that the video's over, now that I've shown you the shoes, I, I'm gonna put this back in my shoe rack and I'm gonna throw away the box. I know like a lot of sneaker heads are like, don't throw away the box, but it's like, where am I gonna keep the box? And I'm not gonna resell these shoes because I plan to wear them till they die. And I've already worn them through rain. I've worn them through mud. Like I've crossed the little stream in them. So why would I sell them? I'm not gonna resell them. Plus I have very small feet. Okay, so these are the Converse's that my husband bought. And you see how big the box is? So this probably took up most of the luggage. He was on a mission to find shoes and jeans, like a jean jacket made in Japan, but none of the clothes fit him. His beloved Anasika Tigers didn't have his size, but he fortunately found some made in Japan Converse's. He got the classic black high tops. This is really heavy though. I think it's just because Converse's in general have a very heavy sole, but also his feet are really big, so it's really heavy. In case you're wondering what he does for a living, I'm a basketball wife. I'm just kidding, he's not a, he's not a basketball player. I learned in Duolingo that basketball in Japanese is basketo bolru. How do you live life with such big feet? There was a funny story about his shoe quest. We were at the OnCloud store and he's like, do you have a US size 12 and a half? And the sales girl was like, oh, 12 and a half. She shook her to her very core. She's like, I've never been requested this big shoe size before. So I noticed that in Japan, a lot of ladies, a lot of women wore very flowy pants, just flowy shirts, flowy pants in general. Right now, wide-legged pants are in. But every time I try out wide-legged pants in America, it always swamps me. I'm very petite. I have to buy petite. But even buying petite, they're still too big. They're still a little bit longer. So I was able to buy like two pairs of 100% linen pants from Muji. Here they are. They're a little wrinkled. I cut the tag off. I haven't worn them, but I threw them into the laundry to wash. And they've just been kind of buried under my, my clothes I have to wash from the trip. And then I bought just the basic cotton t-shirt. I mean, like I went, I, I specifically had a goal to buy like very fashionable minimalist clothes. But for some reason for this trip, we were just so busy just doing things, going to shrines, going to museums. We had tickets to go to the Studio Ghibli Museum, which were not easy to get. It wasn't expensive, but it was just not easy to get. We were so busy that we would shop when we can. So I feel like next time I go to Japan, I'm going to buy more clothes. But this time I just bought basics. Okay, so we went to Tokyo Disney Sea. And it was amazing, guys. I live basically 20 minutes away from Disneyland. The last time I went to Disneyland, the very last time I went to Disneyland was in the year 2000. So it's been 24 years since I set foot in Disneyland. I've never been to Disney World, never been to Florida, but I live 20 minutes away. Like everything in Southern California is technically 20 minutes away, but it takes you an hour to two hours to get there because of traffic. But I don't go to Disneyland because Disneyland in America America is very crowded and uh, very expensive now. It didn't used to be, it used to be like $19.99 for Southern California residents. And I kicked myself that I didn't take advantage of that back in the day, but now it's it, it'll cost you an arm and a leg to go to Disneyland. I like Disney. I like the golden age of Disney, but I was never a Disney enthusiast. I was never a Disney adult, although I'm very pro Disney adult. I feel like if you're an adult, if you're a millennial and you enjoy going to Disneyland, you got the annual pass, you should just indulge in your hobbies. You know, you should indulge in your interests. I myself, I'm like, I could live without it. I don't need to go to Disneyland. But Tokyo Disney Sea was another story altogether. And it's just one of the most spectacular Disneyland parks ever. Oh my God, guys, I am hooked. 
I am hooked. I think I wanna be a Disney adult. Everybody had Mickey ears. Mickey ears were extremely affordable there. They were like 13 US dollars, 14 US dollars. My husband was like, why don't you just buy some Mickey ears? This is your chance to buy Mickey ears. They're more affordable here than they are in the US. And I'm like, where am I gonna wear Mickey ears? I don't go to Disneyland regularly or at all. I don't have an annual membership. If I did go to Disneyland in the US, I wanna wear a baseball cap because I wanna shield my face from the sun. So basically he's like, you're not gonna buy any souvenirs while you're at Tokyo Disney. I'm like, I'm, I'm good. I, I just, I'm just vibing with the, the day. I'm all about experiences. I don't really need to own anything, but he bought this Tokyo Disney Sea retro t-shirt and he bought it in a large, but it's too small for him. So now it's mine. So now I have my souvenir from Tokyo Disney Sea. Let me tell you, I've got a taste now. It opens up a floodgate and I'm like, what have I been missing for 24 years, not going to Disneyland? Maybe one day we'll go to, we'll go to Disney World. I think there's a police chase out there. There's a lot of police chases around here. Like in Japan, I was able to lean into my inner Asian. I was able to just like lean into my love of cute things. So I have a plushie collection. My couch is filled with plushies. I have this potato. I love this potato the best. Then there's the astronaut version of this potato. I just love how, I love its face is so pathetic. I like cute things that are round and pathetic looking. The Squishmallows are not cute enough for me. Like the Squishmallows, they have this, like they have the smile and I don't like the plushies to look happy. I like them to look pathetic. So this is not part of my Japan haul, but I would just like to show you that like on a normal given day, I'm surrounded by stuffed animals. And in Japan, people are okay with that. In America, in America, people are very judgy about this. In Japan, specifically in Tokyo Disney Sea, I felt free to just really lean into my inner Asian. I was able to just like lean into my love of cute things. And I feel like it's okay for me because I'm an Asian girl, Asian woman, and you're always gonna be okay for liking cute things. There's gachapon machines stations all over Japan, like in every single precinct and in the subway station. I did the Sanrio one and I got Hello Kitty. I was hoping for a Puchaco. I like to call him Puchacho, you know, the, the dog, but I got Hello Kitty. I like Hello Kitty, but I feel like in terms of Sanrio characters, she sucks all the air from the room. At one of the train stations, I got a pin. I don't know what these animals, these creatures are called, but this green duck or penguin or platypus, this green bird thing really speaks to me. I went to the Sanrio flagship store and I really didn't know what to buy. I just wanted to see it. So I decided to buy this Kuropi keychain. Kuropi just speaks to me. I like the feel of this. And I remember he had a little friend, a snail. The snail is not included with this, but I think maybe I'll just add this to my keychain. I currently have Sebastian of Black Butler dressed like a cow as my keychain. So maybe I'm thinking about swapping that out and putting Kuropi in there because Kuropi has like good volume, good, good hand feel. I don't know what I'm saying here. I'm very tired, guys. I have to be careful. I drop everything. I break everything. And this is very fragile. It's a bell of Hello Kitty in a kimono. I picked up this Penko all-purpose storage solution. It's like a wallet, but you can put other things in. You can put a ruler or a pen. Where's this made in? Made in Korea, but it's a Japanese company that specializes in retro Americanized stationery. I'm into green bird-like ducks. I think this is a platypus. This is a coin purse. It spoke to me. Like, look at this. I don't think this character has a name, but it's a duck or platypus with a pickle. So. In Japan, you can use your credit card in most places in the city. Although some cities are, like Kyoto is more cash heavy. In Tokyo, you could use your credit card mostly anywhere, but sometimes some restaurants are cash only or some places it's cash only when you go to shrines and you make donations. I knew that I was going to have some spare change, just spare yen left from watching some Tokyo vlogs. They recommended that you get a little coin purse because you're gonna have a lot of loose yen. This was my coin purse in middle school for 20 something years. This has been buried somewhere in my parents' home. And so I dug it out and I used it as a coin purse. So it's a Peco backpack. It's this little, little purse. I wish I had a little plushie to put this little backpack on. So anyways, 
I've been in Kauai heaven. I got these campus notebooks. In Mitsua in Southern California, there's this, there's a bookstore attached to the grocery store. Right now, I can't remember what the bookstore is called. All the names are escaping me. I'm just running on fumes and sugar and, and caffeine right now. Campus notebooks are sold there and they're super expensive in the US, but this was about 600 yen, this entire pack. 600 yen is three dollars and 85 cents us in america each one of these books would probably be like five dollars each so i got like a pack of campus notebooks i don't know what i'm gonna do with this if for those of you that don't know i am a romantic comedy novelist so i'm probably gonna use this to plot out some some plots some romance plots or something or maybe scripts well, I don't script YouTube videos, ideas for YouTube videos, or maybe I'm just gonna use this as a diary. So in Kyoto, I bought some confectionery treats because I didn't know that I was going to talk about this on camera. I, um, we, uh, we ate, we ate half of this box. These are individual cute little jellies. See right here? They all kind of taste the same. Like they don't have like a different flavor. I think it's just food coloring, but they all just kind of taste like sugar, but they're cute. They're kawaii and that's why I got them. Unfortunately, I just kind of eat things and wear things as I go. I don't like preserve it just to film it. I ripped off the tags to my clothes. I wore my shoes. I dumped my clothes in the laundry and to fish it out again. So this is all very chaotic and unplanned, but I guess that's what you expect from me anyways. I have this philosophy that life comes first and then YouTube. And by life, I mean, I gotta eat the candy. So this one is a bunch of hard candy. And I took a picture while in the store of what this consists of. I haven't opened it yet. We're both gonna eat this. It could be a gift too. It's a gift to both of us. I love gummies more than hard candy. And these I bought at the Kobini at the uh, Lawson's 7-Eleven. And I've been eating them throughout the trip. At the airport, they had a 7-Eleven. And it was like my final chance to buy stuff from 7-Eleven. And you know, if you guys have seen Tokyo vlogs and stuff, like Japan's convenience stores are so neat and so clean. The food is good there. The food they have have like the egg sandwiches, katsu sandwiches. The, the Lawson's has incredible chicken nuggets. Tastes like real chicken. It's not like McDonald's chicken nuggets that doesn't really taste like real chicken. This is like actual chicken and I've just been addicted to it, but I've also been addicted to the gummies. These are sour peach gummies. And I learned of these from Lynn Trung. Like I, I really like her channel. Like she is basically young enough to be my daughter. I'm old enough to be her, her young mother or something. I learned of this from her. I love peach flavor anything. I love sour. So this is a good recommendation. There's this candy that a monk gave my husband at a shrine. We'll get into that later. Japanese Kit Kat, Tokyo Shima lemon flavor, hojicha flavor. Hojicha is a roasted I think it's a green tea, roasted green tea. I've had hojicha before. You could buy it at like H Mart, 99 Ranch, Mitsua, obviously. Shin Shu Apple. Ume Sake. So it's like a sour plum sake flavor Kit Kat. A strawberry cheesecake. And this is the, oh, I don't know what this is. Tasudo Original Mom Miji Manju flavor. Is it, is it red bean? But it, it looks like it wants to be maple or red bean, but I'm sure it's gonna be delicious. Like a Four Seasons tea, spring, summer, fall, autumn, and this is like a gift to my parents. This is the tattoo, tattoo tea. So this tea, I've already had some of it and it has loganberry, but it tastes like a lychee tea. And this is like a cinnamon hojicha tea. Japanese tea. Oh God, it smells so good. Mm, it's aromatic and fragrant. Let's move on to my husband's haul because I, I honestly didn't purchase much for myself, but he has quite a good haul. In Japan, there's a ton of shrines everywhere in Tokyo and Kyoto and the city is just full of shrines. And you get these books. They're specifically for the stamps that you require there. You can't just bring a field notebook or a book of your own. This, these books are specifically for you to collect your goshweens. Got some cool ones. I have to be gentle with this because I'm always breaking his things. The monk will write in calligraphy where you got it from and the date. I have to be very gentle. This is very fragile and I am very, I'm very bad. He filled up two books worth. We went to a lot of shrines. See, oh, I'm, I, 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 I just fear that I'm going to rip something 
or drop it. You see? Okay, I'm gonna put it away. I don't I don't like to touch his things. He keeps his things very nicely. Once we went through his toys and he had this like guy version of Polly Pocket. I think it was Mad Max or something. I opened it and I broke it. And he's like, it's been, <laughs> it's been in pristine condition for 30 years. <laughs> and you open it and you broke it or like I lost a piece. We went to the Nintendo store in Tokyo and he picked up on the day of the release Paper Mario. RPG, Switch game. And you can play this in English. They they said you can play this in English. We haven't tried it yet. Funny story, and you guys are, this is gonna blow your mind, and you're gonna feel very sorry for me. I'm a 90s kid, but for some reason, throughout the 90s, well, I know what the reason is. The reason is because I grew up poor. My family didn't buy me any consoles. I didn't have any friends that had consoles. None of my cousins also had video game consoles. So I went through my childhood without playing a single video game. I mean, I played Tetris on one of those handheld bargain basement video game things. And I've played those casino games, those keychain Yahtzee games. I played Solitaire and Minesweep, but I have never until fairly recently, like two years ago, fairly recently, I've never played Mario. When we first got married, my husband has all the, the retro games and we played GoldenEye and it was really hard. Because I didn't play any video games, I have very poor spatial reasoning. It's like if we played together, there's no competition. Like he just wiped the floor with me. I don't know what I'm doing. I currently, I have a Nintendo Switch and I use it to play Animal Crossing. I've acquired other games as well. I have Mario Kart in it and I find it really stressful. I just like to play Animal Crossing because the creatures are cute and I consider them my friends in some kind of weird way. And I don't have an online account. So that means on my island, I only have oranges and apples and that's it. I have no other fruit. I'll swing the axe and the axe will go this way and the tree is over here. So now you know I have no spatial reasoning skills. So it's important, I guess, to play games when you're a kid so that you can function, you know, as an, as an adult. Gently, gently. Ooh, it smells good, it smells new. So this is a winter scene in Kyoto. You see, is the camera picking it up? Is it too bright? Okay, that's enough. I'm gonna put this away before I do any damage to it. Don't let it touch your face. The folds are so crisp. Oh no. Okay. No! Be gentle. Uh-oh. Why doesn't it go back? This is not hard. This is just me folding a square cloth along the crease. And then this fold this way. No. Oh no. Oh no, I messed it up. Okay, I got it. In Japan, we went through a variety of used game shops, retro game shops, like all over, all over Tokyo. I can't even remember where. He was on a mission to find two games. He was trying to find Final Fantasy VI. I've never played any Final Fantasy. I don't even know what, what he's talking about, but apparently that's the, the best one and he was trying to find this game called Chrono Trigger. And he loaned it to a friend and the friend never gave it back. And that's why he doesn't loan any games to any more friends. Final Fantasy VI, I guess he rented at Blockbuster, but he wants to own it. But in this quest to find these games, I was extremely tired. In used game stores, there's no place to sit down. But when I was at the Sanrio flagship store, there was like a bench and it was all full of men, you know, like boyfriends and husbands, like they had a place to sit down. And I'm like, how come in girl stores, there is a place to sit down for the guys, but then how come in like video game stores or like more boy oriented stores, there's no place to sit down. And he was like, because, <laughs> because men come alone. <laughs> he was on this mission to find it. And I guess everybody else was on a mission to find it as well. And they were all sold out. My husband and I were interested in mid-century modern design. Our dream house would be an Eichler. Our dream house would be one of those Palm Springs houses. You know, as with all houses, very expensive, but those in particular, the mid-century modern homes, the Eichlers with the Spanish courtyard are especially expensive. I was really hoping that mid-century modern design would just fall out of style. I mean, it's a timeless style, but you know, with Gen Z loving this postmodern curves and everything, I was just hoping that the demand for mid-century modern homes would just 
fall and then the price of the houses would fall and we'll be finally be able to buy a mid-century modern home. But I don't think that's the case because wherever there's a millennial, they would be interested in mid-century modern homes. That's a generalization. Don't get all worked up. But in any event, my husband frequents Bandcamp and he came upon a few records designed by this artist named Hiroshi Nagai. And he does mid-century modern tropical illustrations. He found out that Hiroshi Nagai has an art studio, but we weren't able to go to the art studio because it was closed at the time, but he had various pop-ups at certain department stores. We were able to pick up two art books from him. I'm trying to be really careful. Something fell. I'm trying to be really careful. Mid-century modern tropical design has a Hawaii-esque feel. Here you go. Bear with me a second. I'm dangerously close to damaging something. So and I have to be extra careful because it has an OB strip. So my husband collects records. He's very much about Japanese records with the OB strip included because it's the extra touch and apparently it's worth more. So this book has an OB strip, but this is the next Hiroshi Nagai book. The albums that he illustrates on Bandcamp, I believe the genre is Japanese city pop. Here, here it is. I'm very awkwardly showing you these books like I can't flip through a book like my shoulder is going this way I'm just trying to be I'm just trying to be careful I feel like something will happen in which my lipstick will accidentally touch the pages we went to Tower Records this brings me back this brings me back to the 90s and the early 2000s Tower Records no longer exists in the states but it is very much alive in Japan. And in Tokyo, they have a seven story tower records. Immaculate, by the way. So my husband picked up some albums, some vinyl. He's into collecting vinyl. I'm not really into collecting vinyl. I listen to most of my music on Spotify, but before Spotify, I would get music from the library. Like the library allowed you to download five free songs a week. And the only songs I would download were Bruce Springsteen songs. And then I would burn them on a CD and listen to them in my car over and over and over again. So all the CDs I own back in the day, back in the mid to early 2000s, my husband would give me a mixtape. We were a little too young to do the, the cassette mixtapes, but we did the CD mixtapes. I have to say that in my life, I've only purchased about five CDs, like five actual CDs, and I know exactly what they are. $14.59 Sugar Ray. Every morning there's a halo hanging from the corner. Anyways, at Tower Record, he got this um, Hiroshi Nagai foldable card thing. Maybe like paper dolls. Cut it out, fold it, and then you make this little album thing. You know, he's very committed. He's very committed to Hiroshi Nagai. So Hiroshi Nagai, if you hear this, you have one number one fan in my husband. And I appreciate you too, but he is... He's in love with you. This bag is iconic. I feel like we need to save this bag because when are you ever gonna get a Tower Records bag? Chrono Trigger original soundtrack. Oh, this is the game he was looking for. This is what Chrono Trigger is. I remember looking at this myself because he was browsing, he was browsing for a long time and I explored all seven floors of Tower Records. I remember looking at this and liking the album art. So I'm glad he got it. We saw this album everywhere. Oh, I almost dropped it. Oh my God. If he knew that I almost dropped his album. We've seen in almost every record store, this is probably the It album of Japan. It's Japanese city pop. It's apparently from his research, one of the seminal Japanese city pop albums out there and I've not listened to it but I will. A Daft Punk album, the Japanese version of Random Access Memories with an Obi strip. The 20th anniversary Zeno Gears, the beginning and the end. He can probably tell me, but I'm sure you guys would like to tell me what this is too. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure those who like to teach me a lesson would like to tell me what this is as well. So what is the 20th anniversary Zeno Gears, beginning and end? He picked up some models that he will have to paint this castle in the sky model that um we picked up at the studio ghibli museum and then at the gundam base he picked up this model he's got a lot of activities to do from our hall he's got this model to build and to paint and to source out the paint he's got this model to build he's got these records to clean and de-static and i've got i've got this karopi keychain to look at have you ever noticed that Karopi is cross-eyed? Shinkansen 
bento boxes. So we went to the train and railway museum in Kyoto and right before the entrance of the museum, there was this little stall selling bento boxes. We didn't get to lunch until later. So everything was sold out except for these train shaped bento boxes, which I think were for children. I don't know what I'm gonna put in here. Oh, maybe I know what I'm gonna put in here. I have, now that I have all these little trinkets, like Karopi, I could put Karopi in here and lock him up. You know, what do you think about that? So these will be utilized for something. Or maybe I should just redecorate my bookshelf and put these Shinkansen bento boxes on there. What do you think? Huh? Is this, does this look aesthetic? I like the yellow, I ate out of the yellow one and my husband ate out of the white one and what it contained was a little hot dog. I also think this would be a good weapon. I don't know who I would hit with this. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are asking for it. There's a lot of people out there that actually deserve to be hit by a Shinkansen bento box. What, what am I saying? So I ran out of sunblock while I was there and I purchased some Japanese sunblock. This is the Biore UV SPF 50, so you know it's good. And this is Light Up Essence, so it's supposed to make you a little paler. And in any event, this sunblock feels so much better than American sunblock. I currently use the Neutrogena SPF 70 in the yellow bottle. It always feels so oily and it makes me feel greasy and sticky, but this has a very delicate floral scent it glides on non-sticky. So this one, I'm not sure if it actually works, but on the on the box, it says that it can make you look paler. My husband looked at my face after I wore this. We both wore it. He said, you do look a little paler. And I'm like, oh, is it happening? Am I gonna have that pale white peach Asian glow? But if anything, if it can make me look like some of the Japanese girls or women that I see on the subway, they have, oh my God, they have perfect skin. When I say perfect skin, it's like when people are always talking about like the filtered skin on social media like there's no pores whatsoever and then you're like no, that that can't exist in real life this is just a filter but then in real life I saw it firsthand I witnessed it firsthand and there are women out there with absolutely perfect perfect glass onion filtered non-porous skin so this bento box and this sunscreen it feels really good in my hand I like I like waving it around so what if what if I took the sunscreen and it became my new microphone? This feels good. Like this, this, <laughs> this makes me feel a certain kind of way. I don't know what way that is, but I, it feels good. It feels right. I, I like it better than the rose. So maybe this will be my new microphone. This takes low production value to a new level. Now that I've mentioned Sugar Ray 1459 as one of the five CDs I owned in the early 2000s. Something's in my head. I've got a, I've got an earworm that I just can't get out. And the only way I can relieve myself of it is to couldn't understand how to work it out. Sing along with me. Come on now. Come on now. No, don't let me. Don't let me hang out there alone. Once again, it's predicted that my broken heart's open and you ripped it out. Is that the right lyrics? Type it in the comments below. Sugar Ray, what are they up to? Oh, shit. They are reunited and they're on tour. They're gonna be in Fresno at the big Fresno fair on October 3rd. All right, that's it guys. After Japan, bucket list trip. Let's go to Fresno. I'm going to Fresno guys. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Shut the door, baby. Don't say a word.